Good morning, Anna. My name's Amanda and I live on the Wirral and I am a carer to my adult son with autism and before that I used to be a nurse. So I do have a kind of a little bit of background knowledge with viruses and general stuff like that but it was a very long time ago. But I just wanted to sort of pass on my views on how the um, the lockdowns actually affected me and my family, my two sons who also have, or the other one lives in a care home and he's also autistic. I got a phone call a few weeks back, the sort of phone call that every mother dreads basically, saying that he'd been tested positive for COVID. Now, I'm very sceptical about these tests, you know, what with them testing bananas and, and furniture and stuff and them coming back positive but you have to just take this for what it is and so I had to wait 14 days to see if he developed symptoms all the while thinking well if he dies I'm not going to be there now that was horrible because I was talking to the woman that was actually looking after him and she was saying we'd have to buy you in we wouldn't let you in now that's not nice for them and that's not nice for me and it, I don't know how my son would feel um, about not actually seeing seeing his family if he was dying because with the level of understanding he has about the world I don't think he'd understand why it was happening and and he'd be very frightened and afraid well fortunately God willing he didn't get any symptoms and after 14 days he was cleared and as far as I know now he's had negative tests but that wasn't a nice thing to go through at all me and my other son we we didn't well it wasn't very nice him not to be able to go to his day service because he quite likes his day service and I was 24 hour entertainments manager which was quite hard work to be honest but we get on well and we've done this before so that didn't bother us that much but the restrictions the fact that there was nowhere to take him there was no cafes open um, and all this stuff and, and no shops to go to because that was one of the last little pleasures I've got in my life because being a mother of a handicapped child, there's a lot of things you can't actually do, which is fair enough, I suppose, because that's just the way it all turns out. But it was hard for him because he didn't understand why we couldn't do things. So we did go out and we did what we could and we sat on benches and we wandered about and we had a look round and we went on journeys on the train and all that stuff. But then we get this thing with the masks now. Now... He does wear a visor on a good day, and I will wear a visor, but I really can't get on with masks, and I am not going to entertain masks. I will, I will cover my face in an enclosed area to protect other people, because quite frankly, with the way, the way that these symptoms are with COVID, you just, you're not really sure if you've got it at all. I mean, even if you get knocked over by a bus and die, then you've died of COVID now, nowadays, so it's very difficult to know. Well, as I say, we we just we, we we may have had the odd cold or the odd sniffle, but I don't know if that was COVID or not. And we both seem okay, but I will be considerate of other people because there is so much fear about. And I have to tell you, as an ex nurse, fear is one of the things that turns off the immune system. It's very good at turning off the immune system, and if you are frightened then you're going to have adrenaline and cortisone in your body and all sorts and your immune system's not going to work properly. So please don't be frightened of a little virus. Take your vitamin C, take your D3, take your zinc, eat properly, get plenty of sleep and just hope for the best basically. Don't be silly, don't take silly risks, but just look after yourself. And this is what we've been doing. It's been a long old time. It's been a long old few months that we've been, we've been actually having to do this. But we've done it and now things are slowly getting back to normal again. And the other thing which, which affected me greatly is the fact that the son that was in the care home was actually, he was due to move because he wasn't happy basically. They couldn't, they couldn't provide for his needs. Nothing, nothing about the people that are looking after him because I've always thought the people are good and they do the best they can. And I'm, I think they did do the best they could. I'm sure they did. But it wasn't enough for him. He wasn't happy. So eventually we got somewhere for him. And two days before it was due to go, it was, you know, we were trying to get it all sorted out. And that, they just locked us down. 
So we've had to wait from March until now. And when the hotels are opening the place where he lives, then it's all going to start. But he's had that extra time, and in that extra time, he's not been able to see me, my other son that lives in the care home. And I used to go down religiously once a fortnight to see him. And all of a sudden, I just didn't come anymore. Now, I don't know what he must have thought of that. I mean, they might have told him, they might not. But now we've, we've got a sort of a system now where we can sit outside with him. I don't think they are pleased about it, but they let me do it. But the trouble is now, with the transport, with the trains being cut and the buses not being very many buses to go to the place, it's, it's more or less impossible and very tiring, especially when you've got another adult with autism with you. Very hard. So I am quite relieved now that it's all started and that hopefully in the next couple of months he's going to be in this new place because we're going to find that much easier. And I hope, hope it would be. And you see, if it hadn't been for the, the lockdown, he could have been there in March. So he's had all that extra months of suffering. I haven't seen him. I've had to deal with the fact that he could have died. I mean, I know these kids, the, old, the, the kids that get it, they probably don't get it as bad as the old people. But when you've got asthma, epilepsy, and you are at least two stone overweight, then you, you are somebody who's, who's, who's at risk. So we didn't know. We didn't know what was going to happen. But hopefully now things will be a little bit better. But I just don't know.